on Qantas again. Good old Qantas, the mangy room. There's something quite comforting about travelling in Japan if you've been there. Whenever you buy anything, you know you don't have to haggle. You're probably not being ripped off. There's comfort in the knowledge that the price is the price, that the service will match the price, that the train will arrive on time. Here in Australia, you don't have that comfort. You have to worry about being ripped off, being preyed upon by almost every service provider, depending on the sector. You expect to be ripped off in some cases. That is what we have come to as an economy, as a nation, as a society. To be expect to be chipped for a few cents in the dollar by your bank every time you make a transaction. You know, they'll be taking a slice of you. You know your energy provider. Well, they've all been privatised almost, so they'll be taking your shirt as well. And you know when you book a flight or accommodation, if you don't grab the first offer online but check around the prices and come back later, they might have jacked the prices up 20%. There's all sorts of ways that you get preyed upon. It's all part of the customer experience, particularly in aviation. We just published a What's the Scam item on Qantas. Qantas PR department didn't bother returning our media inquiries, although they are the media spokespeople. The communication specialists, experts in not communicating at all, experts in stonewalling, in fact. It seems, though, that they are gouging their customers through another little rort illegally again. This time, it's concocting a special discount offer for frequent flyers for their best customers, the best targets, then actually jacking up the price. Here's a lovely discount offer with a beautiful marketing name on it. But instead of discounting it, they jacked up the price. Like the old supermarkets, putting the block of cheese up to 12 bucks from eight and then discounting it to 10 and saying, hey, come and get it. It's a bargain. And this is why we hope that the ACCC takes Qantas to court properly, rather than settling for this ghost flights matter. That's the 8,000 flights which did not exist, but which were sold to customers anyway, because you know it's more profitable to cancel a flight and try to keep the money, because then you get all the government fees and charges, and the landing fees for Sydney Airport or whatever as well. You keep all that stuff yourself because your customer's already paid for it. And if that customer is too busy to stick around on the telephone for hours fighting you, beseeching you, then you get the full ticket price for no service at all. So we hope that they go them, the ACCC, but we don't think they will because Qantas will probably settle because let's face it, the directors are gonna say, it's not our money, it's shareholder money. We don't wanna be dragged through court for negligence. We don't want any insider trading charges against anybody. So here's the latest scam. On February 21, Qantas launches a double status credits offer. Targeting its frequent flyer customers, the offer was available until February 27 for travel over the next 12 months. Status credits are the currency used to determine the level of perks for members of Qantas's frequent flyer program. So far, so good. But a travel agent has alerted Michael West Media to several examples where the price of the fares went up during the promo period. In one example, an economy fare to the US was priced at $2,139.50 the day before the promotion started, and it increased to $2,696.50 on February 21. After the promo finished, the same fare for the same destination on the same date reverted back down to $2,139.50. So there was a 26% fair increase masquerading as a special beautiful discount for Qantas's best customers the frequent flyers now when we do hear from Qantas finally if they do deign to get back to us this team of non-communications people then we will add the result in the description below you remember back in the day when you bought a flight you're fairly sure barring bona fide maintenance issues or weather that you could get to the airport and board that flight you could be reasonably sure that you would not get bumped so they're trying to bulk up the yield you would not get delayed or overcharged you might even get a row of seats for yourself and be able to take a proper nap if it was a long haul flight long gone are those days because it's all about yield now it's all about cancelling flights to bump up your yield 
and put as many bums on seats as possible, regardless of the inconvenience to your customers. Thank you so much for your support. Please like, share, comment in the section below and throw us a few bucks on Patreon if you can afford it.